So this is going to be the famous Skull Island project. So I already have a version. I need a, I need a new version. So let's do, uh, let me do this. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I recommend putting this on your D drive in case something happens. You won't lose everything. And I'm creating a folder called Skull Island to stick it in. So you could put yours on D, Skull Island, and you should be all set. <clears throat> okay, has anyone taken the level design class yet? Yes. Okay. Might be a bit of a review for you, but maybe not. So the objective here is for me to show you all of the different features in the terrain editor, how to work with terrain objects. And it's just sort of a fun exercise for setting up what could be a real game. So this could be the basis for several of your projects. It could be the basis for the Temple of Doom project. It would certainly probably be the basis for the, uh, the, the shooting game project. <clears throat> So in addition to terrain, we'll also learn about first-person characters. All right, so we'll start with the terrain object. So Unity has all these features that allow us to make these really cool outdoor terrain scenes. And so that's what we're going to build. And we'll start with something fairly basic. So we'll do game object. And then under 3D object, you'll find the terrain object. <clears throat> and I'll move this over so we can see it. It'll look funny on the video, but that's okay. All right, so here's our terrain object, and we have our properties as usual over here in the inspector. Actually, I'll move it back over because we don't really need that hierarchy right now. We need the inspector more, so let's move this over so we can see the whole inspector. Okay, so the terrain object is selected, and I'll zoom out a little bit just with my mouse wheel. And it's pretty big. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to change some of the settings on this thing. So for that, all of the tools are right here. They're in this terrain setting little button group here. And I'll click the last one. I'll click the gear. And as you scroll down, you'll find the section called Resolution and Terrain Width and Height, 500 and 500. That's actually not too bad. Seems like in Unity 4 it was like 2,000 by 2,000, which was too large. But I'll change it just for the sake of changing it a little bit. Um, 4 is too small. I'll do 400 and 400. And you'll see that that adjusts the size of the terrain. So the larger the terrain, the larger the game is going to be in terms of the final production size. But because Unity is so good at using memory, it's not really a memory hog. Um, it loads in the sections that it needs as it needs them, rather than trying to load the entire terrain into memory at the same time. <clears throat> Okay, I'll scroll back up and my tools are still here and I'll show you the first one. So this allows you to raise and lower terrain areas. And I'm just going to square this up a little bit. If you've forgotten, it's the right mouse button to rotate the center wheel. You can roll it back and forth to zoom in and out, but if you press it, then you can move it around with your hand. And so I'll just kind of center this up so that I can see it. And usually the first thing I do on a terrain is I put an edge around the square. Um, eventually we're going to have a player 
at ground level, and they'll be looking out over the horizon, and it's, in my opinion, a little bit tacky if they can see the edge. It just sort of ruins the illusion. So usually the first thing I do, again, is I, I put an edge on this thing. And to do this, I just need to pick one of the brushes that are down here. So you can see that there are different brushes, different shapes, and this is just like any other painting tool. I'm just going to stick with this um, simple first one. And you can change the size and the opacity down here as well by sliding these up and down. So as I make the brush size larger, obviously, the dot gets larger. And then I can make it smaller. So it's just like a paint program. And then opacity works the way you would probably expect it to. It just controls how much effect your clicks are going to have. So for this, I'm going to set the opacity sort of low around 20-ish, and I'll set the brush size around 60, and I'll paint an edge back here. And I'm just clicking with the mouse. And as you hold the mouse button down, you'll see that the terrain grows. And I'm just going to hug the edge and draw a lip around this. <clears throat> and that's not bad. Now all of these tools have a little hint in here. It says, click to raise, hold down shift to lower. So what I can do is I can paint an area in here in the middle. And decide that I don't like that. So if I hold down shift, I can sort of lower it back down and take some of that detail away. Now at the moment, it's not going to make an indentation in the ground. So don't spend a lot of time making your opus in here, your great work, because we're about to blow it away. Good, nobody groaned. Oh man, I just made a perfect picture of myself in 3D relief. No, hopefully not. So we actually do want to make some indentations in here, because eventually we're going to make a lake or a stream or a gorge or something down here. And so to do this, we need to move to the next tool, which is Paint Height. So this is an interesting tool. There's actually two things on this screen that you need to be aware of. First and foremost, if you want to paint an indentation, you have to come to this screen first. So there's this flatten button down here, and there's this height setting. And when I click flatten, it's going to change the height. That's going to basically flatten everything on the map, but it's also going to give the map a height and the height is 159 meters. So I'm going to click Flatten, and it's going to, all my stuff's going to go away. But I've gained a little bit of a bonus here. So usually, if you, if you know you're going to need gorges and holes and things like that in the terrain, you come in here and do this first. I'll switch back to my Raise and Lower Terrain, and now when I hold down the Shift key, I should be able to paint an indentation. So it goes deep down, it doesn't just go down to the surface level. <clears throat> All right, I'll switch back over to my flatten, and I'm going to flatten it again because I just did that to show you how it works. And I'll go ahead and put that same edge on the outside that I did a minute ago. Bless you. And I'm not going to try to be pixel perfect in this class at any time, let alone now because you watching me try to make something pixel perfect is not a good use of either of our time. So I will get close, and I probably will obsess a little bit because it's in my nature to do that, but I'll try not to. Just want something in there. It doesn't have to be very high. Okay, so that's probably perfect. And then right around the middle, middle this way, and probably three quarters of the way, right about the 30 yard line, so to speak. <clears throat> Let's paint a gorge in here. Now I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to go back over to my raise and lower, excuse me, to my paint height tool. And I'll zoom in on this a little bit so that it's a little more centered up. And paint height will actually allow you to paint to a particular height. So there's two ways to do this. You can set it here 
So I can set this to say 230, close to 230. And what will happen if I paint is it will paint to 230 meters and eventually it will plateau out. And so it won't go any higher than that. So that's neat if you want to make an actual plateau, which comes in handy. The other thing that you can do is you can paint to a sampled height. So to sample the height, your clue is right here. It says hold shift to sample target height. So I'm just going to point to the ground, anywhere on the ground down here. Hold down shift and click it. And you'll note that it changes the height to whatever the sample size is. And so now when I paint this, it's going to paint it back down to nothing. Or whatever height you sampled it to. Okay, so another example, if I shift click this little ridge over here, now I can make something exactly the same height and it'll plateau out. Did anybody play Baldur's Gate for the um, Nintendo, the, like the first Nintendo, the PS1? They had a lot of scenes that remind me of this, sort of these raised and lowered areas in the terrain, and it would be very easy to make a game like that using these tools. Okay, but I really want to gorge back here around the middle third, so I'm going to lower this. I'm going to set it down. What was it? It was 159. A little bit goes a long way. I'm just going to set it to around 140-ish. And I'm going to paint a depression in here. That's with the raise lower terrain. Oops. And I'm going to paint an area out here like this. So it's going to kind of like be a little bit of a pool here. Okay, that's fine. Now would be a good time to save. So let's go ahead and save our scene. And there's only going to be one, so I'm just going to call it main and leave it at that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now you're probably wondering why we're calling this exercise Skull Island. Maybe when I go back to the edit and edit the video, I'll put dramatic music in there when I say Skull Island. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <sighs> That'd be pretty awesome. Here's what I did, and I've been doing this for a while. I had this idea. Actually, I think I ripped this idea off from watching um, Arrow, the TV series Arrow. Though they don't have a Skull Island. I had an idea where we would make some sort of game where you're stuck on an island. And, of course, you're stuck with ninjas. And uh, you have to figure out how to survive on the island. So that was sort of the basis for the idea. And then, for whatever reason, I decided that we needed a land feature that looked like a skull. I'm sure I've seen that in a movie somewhere. I just can't think of where it is. So where to get the skull? I could go to the asset store, but frankly, when I devised this little plot, um, the asset store didn't have anything in it. And so I went to Turbo Squid, which is a marketplace for 3D professionals. And they just happen to have a skull that I can use that doesn't cost anything. If I can remember my password me and passwords. What are we going to do about that? There we go. Okay, you don't have to sign up for this. I'm just showing you where it is and what the process was. So I've got this skull that we can use. Oh look, there's the dice for our dice game. We'll do that later. It's probably A long time ago, so we'll find it.
I think most of the things in my basket here were free, by the way. So there are a lot of free things in here. There, there's a skull, but that's not what we want. Uh, we wanted something a little more lifelike. There it is. Okay, so we're going to use this one. But it's got this extra stuff on it, right, that we don't care about. So I'll download it. And I happen to notice that that was, where did it go? So the format is Blender. So that's nice because Blender is free, so I like free. It's not my favorite 3D tool, but it's hard to beat free, right? So let me get Blender. You used to be able to import things directly into Unity that were made in Blender, but you can't anymore. You can still use it, but you have to install Blender to your system and then register it as an external application. So that's a bit of a bummer. I use the portable app version of Blender. That way it's on all my machines. And you'd think it'd be at the top. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Looks eerily similar to uh, Unity, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, so I'll go get it. There it is. But it has that extra stuff on it. So there's like this cloudy stuff underneath it. There's stuff on top of it. We just really want the skull. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and take all this extra crap out. Sorry, can I say crap on TV? <clears throat> I guess I can. I'm not on TV. And I'm actually going to take everything out of the scene that I don't need, which is pretty much everything. So I'm going to get rid of the lights. And just clean that up. And I think that's everything I need. And I'm going to export it. Since I mentioned I don't have a good way to import Blender anymore. Um, I could I could set it up if I wanted to, but why when we have these nice export features here, right? So I can export this to 3D Studio, which pretty much always works in Unity. Uh, but the other one that always works in Unity is FBX. So I'm going to go with the FBX because I know it's going to work. And I'm going to save this under a file name, Plano Skull, because it's just a Plano Skull. But um, shh. And yeah, I did it earlier just to make sure it would work. <laughs> All right, so Plano Skull is now in Downloads. And what I'll do is I'll put it up on Blackboard so that you can get it and put it into your scene. <clears throat> Downloads, and it's Plano Skull. Unless that's not where I put it. Let me see. Oh, it's under skull. That's the problem. Yeah, I'll just upload that. It's not big. Oh, no. 
I hate it when I do that. <laughs> I thought I was in the upload and I wasn't. So now Visual Studio is going to open this up. Good times. All right. So it will be at the bottom. There's your Skull Island Skull. So go get that. And I'll deal with the fallout of my errant double click. Bet you didn't know you could open FBX animation files in Visual Studio, did you? <clears throat> nope. Look you there. <laughs> Yeah, since you can write Windows games in, that's interesting. Oh, I haven't signed on in a while, that's why it's mad. <laughs> since you can write Windows games in Visual Studio, it knows what all those media files are. So it knows how to deal with FBXs, 3D Studio files, stuff like that. Neat, right? All right, and I have it. I guess I'll give you a minute. Pause the recording for a moment. All right, so let's bring the skull in. So to do that, just drag it and drop it into your assets. And now we've got this prefab called Plano Skull. So I'll drag it out in my scene. That's a pretty small skull. So what I'll do is I'll size it up quite a bit. And I'm going to position it right over this section of this little lake thing here. And I kind of want it setting into the ground, so that's pretty much what I want. I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but don't worry about it. We can adjust as we go. All right, so now we have a skull on Skull Island. So all is right with the world. <clears throat> let's take a look at texturing. So let's go into our terrain again. Pick the terrain over here in the hierarchy. And we'll go back over here to our terrain tools. And the third one over, no, I'm sorry, the fourth one over. We didn't talk about the third one over. The third one over is a smoothing tool. So if you've had any experience with 3D tools, you know that a lot of times you have these smoothing tools that allow you to sort of subdivide triangles and things like that. And this just sort of makes these jagged edges a little bit less jagged. So you can play around with that. That's a pretty straightforward one. Um, the more interesting one, I think, though, is the, the paint texture tool. And then the other, t the other two that come after it are pretty cool, too. So let's add some textures to this. And it's sort of a pattern. There aren't any terrain textures defined, so we really can't add any right now. So let's go get some. So we go over to Assets, and then do Import Package, and then Import Environment. We'll get the standard Unity packages. Now, of course, again, you can go out on the Asset Store and get other packages, or you can make your own packages. And there's probably a lot of stuff in here that we don't necessarily need, but I'm in the interest of time, I'm just going to select import. I, I really doubt that I'm going to need the car control prefab, but that's okay. I'll click import. It'll bloat the size of my project file, but it won't bloat the 
final project. So it won't hurt your final game to have a bunch of stuff in there that you don't need. <clears throat> How are we doing? Is the import finished? Okay, because I know it takes a minute, and I know I have probably, I don't know, this may not be faster than your machines. It used to be much faster, but these are pretty good machines. All right. So to get the textures in here, we just need to click Edit Textures, and then Add Texture. Can everybody see that? Let me see. Edit Texture, and then Add Texture. And then you'll click the select box over on the first, in the first box, select button, I should say. And we're looking for a texture that we can use. Unfortunately, it shows you every possible texture in the system, and not all of them are useful for our immediate purpose. So what you want to find first is one of these flat ones. So most of them say albedo on them. So grass rocky albedo, grass hill, sand. I'm going to use grass rocky for the first one. And I'll click Add, and it's going to go ahead and texture all of my terrain with that base texture. And it's not the best texture in the world. It looks fairly repetitive. It's pretty obviously a grid, right? That's okay, we can fix it. <clears throat> Though we're not going to spend a ton of time doing that, because again, this is more a uh, orientation exercise to get you used to the tools than it is an art class. Okay, so we've got our textures down here. I want to direct your attention to this very thin blue line down here. This is telling you that it's selected. And since that's the only one in there, that's the only one we can pick. So let's add another one. And this time I'll go for that grassy hill. I'll bring that one in. And while we're at it, why don't we do the other two? We need the sand, the sand one, and we need the cliff face one. Okay, so sand and cliff are the two we need. Okay, so now we've got four of these things. So once you go beyond four, you're going to start incurring a little bit of a penalty. Does anyone know how this actually works? Has anyone ever heard of a splat map before? <clears throat> sort of an interesting side reading for you. Look up splat maps on Wikipedia, and you'll learn how it works. So somewhere deep in the bowels of your Unity project, there's this splat map that's being generated as you paint things, and it would look something like this one. And you get four channels, and each channel controls one of the textures. So we have four channels, R, G, B, and A, and as soon as you get to the fifth one, um, you're going to incur the penalty of another splat map. So each flat, each splat map is 512 by 512, if memory serves. So every time you add more textures on here um, in multiples of four, you're going to incur another 512 megs, I think they are, of, of space. So that's something to watch out for. You want to keep these... There's no, there's no penalty going up to four, but going beyond four, probably still okay. But if you start getting 10, 20, 30 of these things in here, then you might want to look at optimizing if you can. <clears throat> okay, now that we have four of them loaded up, 
let's paint a few things in here just so you can get the hang of it. I'm going to use the grass texture to break up some of the repetitiveness here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this uh, nice soft brush here. Actually, probably the softest one is the first one, right? I'll stick with that one. I'll just make the brush size really big. I'll keep the opacity light. And now I can paint in areas of green. And then I'll use the sand texture to draw a little road. So it would be helpful if I actually had a game design document, right? <laughs> Where I actually was making something um, to describe what would be on the road. But since this is just an illustrative exercise, we'll just sort of draw one. And I'm going to take my brush size way down to around 20. And I'm going to bring the opacity up somewhere in the 70s. And we'll just say, for the sake of argument, that most levels start, you know, far away from the target that you want them to go to. So we'll say the boss fight's going to be over here, or some neat thing is over here. We've got this great landscape terrain feature. Uh, hey, look, there's a giant skull off in the distance. Maybe I better go see what that is. Um, from a level design perspective, that's pretty good. All right, and then I'm just going to draw a road. And it'll be a long and winding road. And maybe we have some areas where we can branch off. All right, so that's pretty good. <clears throat> and then the next one I'll do is, are the cliff faces. So cliff faces are cool. You can actually use this one. I need to make this quite a bit larger. So anytime you have a rocky face or a cliff or something like that, I'm going to use it around all the edges for our, our gorge. All right, and the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a texture on the skull. Because it looks kind of weird just having that skull there, right? So let's click on the Plano skull. And it's got these shaders already on it. So what I did was I just went down and found this map. It's down in here somewhere. I just with assets selected, I can come in here and type cliff. And I can find that cliff texture. And I just dragged it and dropped it on there. Okay, so if I were doing art, <laughs> which I'm not right now, I would want to take all those other textures off because it's going to be a little... It's going to have some spec specular highlights and things like that. It's going to be a little bit hot. So I'm not going to worry about that. But I can go ahead and take this animator component off, right? Because I'm not going to animate this thing. So it's selected. I'll just click the gear. And I'll remove the animator component. We don't need it. All right, let's go back to our terrain. And let's take a look at the last two tools that are on here. The first one is for trees, and the second one is for grass and terrain details. So let's do the trees first. I feel like I should don my Bob Ross Happy Trees wig. In memoriam, of course. <laughs> 
And as before, we've got this Edit Trees button, and we don't have any trees loaded, so we're going to have to do the same trick we did before. So I'll click Edit Tree, Add. Let me scoot this over so you can see it. Edit Tree, Add Tree. Go find the tree. And it's... To me, that the first few times I saw this, this really confused me. This, to me, does not say click me. <laughs> it's a little target, little pinpoint thing. Um, and there are only a few. You can go get, there are plenty of free trees out on the asset store. Um, but our environment package gave us four, which is great because it used to only give us one. It used to only give us the palm trees. So I'm going to use the palm tree first because I've always used the palm tree first. Used to be that's all I had. And eventually this will render so that you can see a preview of what that tree will look like. But while we're waiting on that, I'm just going to come down to a position where I can see a section of the landscape and set my brush size down a little bit. And my tree density, I'm going to put it way down. Otherwise, I'll get a great big dense forest with one click. And I'm going to start clicking in here. And I'm going to get some trees. And that's not bad. <clears throat> now let's look at our hint here, it says hold down shift to erase trees, hold down control shift to erase the selected type of tree. So if I hold down shift, like I've got a few here that are probably on the road and they shouldn't be on the road like that one right there. Let me make my brush size quite a bit smaller so I can be a little more precise. And I'll hold down shift and I'll get rid of the trees I don't want. All right, let's add another tree. I'll go with broadleaf desktop, since I don't see too many conifers on too many desert islands. Incidentally, the whole reason why I picked a desert island setting is because we only had palm trees in the last few versions of Unity. <laughs> I guess I could now do Sherwood Forest if I wanted to. Okay, same thing. This time the broadleaf is selected. Those are bigger trees. You kind of have to be careful with these because if you click and drag, it's going to look like an orchard, like somebody very deliberately planted a row of trees. Okay, so the point to, to show you here is that second hint, hold down control to erase the selected tree type. So we've got broadleaf selected. If I hold down control and shift, and I drag through here, oops, I don't guess I don't have, oh, I don't have control down. Okay, I'll put them back. I mistyped. Here, we'll just put a bunch of them in there. All right, control shift. I'll come back through here again, and it's only going to take out the broadleaf trees. It's going to leave the palm trees alone. So that lets you thin things out a little bit if you need to, and maybe make them look a little more natural. All right, I guess now we need some water, right? So I think we have some. Oh, we haven't done grass yet. Let's do grass first. The next one over is terrain details. And the same pattern holds. We don't have anything defined, so we have to click Edit Details. And there's two of these. You really don't want to get this wrong. It's either grass or detail mesh. So detail mesh is useful for putting like little rocks and stones and things like that in there. 
and grass is used for putting in, well, grass. And if you get them backwards, you can get some really trippy results. So um, like the, I'll just tell you what the, the obvious difference is between the two. Grass will blow back and forth in the breeze, and rocks really don't. <laughs> so if you accidentally select grass and then load a rock prefab, uh, the rocks wave in the breeze. <laughs> And it's really kind of freaky. Sometimes it actually works. It looks kind of cool. So if you're doing some sort of weird alien thing, um, then maybe you, you would do that. But it, it looks pretty strange most of the time. So if, if you all of a sudden see your rocks, you know, sort of doing weird things, you probably just selected the wrong thing here. All right, so we'll do grass. And now we need to pick a detailed texture. So we'll go find one. And there are a few in here. That we can use. So there's grass frond 01A, oh, that's albedo 02. You're looking for the ones that look like a side view of grass because that's really what you're talking about. And I think those are our only options. So pick one, doesn't matter which one. And let's change the color a little bit because this is going to be way too vibrant. I've never seen grass that looked like that before. And we'll add it in there. And now we can paint our grass in. So I'm going to paint right here. I want you to watch what happens. A whole lot of nothing, right? Okay, it's actually working, but we can't see it because this is a detail. Remember once upon a time I was talking in a lecture going on and on and on, would not shut up about level of detail. This is what we're talking about, level of detail. If you're so far away that you can't see individual blades of grass, it doesn't bother drawing them. You can see the two with the shadows. If you're too far away, it doesn't draw the shadows anymore. But when you get close enough, that grass is going to appear. So when you're drawing grass, you need to make sure that you're down low enough to actually see it. It is a little patchy. Okay, so that's probably good enough. I'm going to put some over by our starting point, too, so we don't have to walk all over the map to see it. Whoops. Okay, pretty good. Now, I've got this mistake here, so it says hold down control to erase and then hold down control like the trees. So if you have multiple types of grass mixed together, then that's cool. I'm going to bring my brush size down and then erase the grass from the road. It would be funny if it gave you a lawnmower icon, but it doesn't. <laughs> Oops. Wonderful. Okay. That's looking all right. Again, not your most artistic endeavor, but you're learning the tools, so the art is your job. <laughs> Or somebody else's job if you don't want to be an artist. But at least now you know how it works. All right, the next thing we're going to do is going to add our first person controller into the scene. Oh, what are we leaving out? Oh, I said we were going to do water next. Let's do the water. And then skybox as well, I'm thinking of it. All right, so we're going to add the water in. And again, that will have come in with the environment. So we'll look for water, and you should find one called Water Basic, just the one I've always used. I think Water 4 is probably nicer, but I've always used Water Basic. And in Unity Pro, you have more water options. This is the free version of Unity, just so you know, which means you can do all of this at home. I'm going to go into Prefabs, and there's two. There's Daytime Water and Nighttime Water. We're going to go with Daytime Water. Drag it and drop it out there. Ooh, it's tiny. Okay. 
Okay, we'll size it up quite a bit. Okay, that's probably just about perfect. Now I'll bring my skull up a little bit because I really want those teeth to show. There we go. And now I might need to come down here. No, it's fine. I was going to say I might need to come down here and build up the sides a little bit. Or so that you don't see skull details floating above the ground because it's supposed to be a rock formation. So we'll just build it up a little bit. That probably looks terrible, but that's okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then I need to make that skull like. So I'll go back over here and paint it the same color as the skull. What is that skull? I think that's where Goliath dropped dead. That's Goliath's skull. There we go. Now we have a story to go with it. Okay, so that's all right. Let's do save our scene. And next, let's go ahead and do our first person controller. So that's also a prefab. Uh, we don't have it though yet, do we? Let's go up to game object. We're, oh, it's in assets, I'm sorry. Go to assets import package, and then import characters. And I usually roll this up to see what we've got. So we've got physics materials. Interesting, it says physics materials, plural there, and the UI says physics materials, but whatever. There's the first person and the third person. We're not going to use the third person. I honestly don't know what rollerball is. So I'll take it out too. And I'll just leave the first person character and I'll leave the physics, material, physics materials in there too. I'll click import. If I've made a mistake and need something from those other two packages, it's easy to bring it in. All right, let's go find it. It's going to be in standard assets and then characters and then first person character and then prefabs and there are two here bless you there's the first person controller and the rigid body first person controller which one do you think we want do we want to react to gravity and collisions yes so you're pretty much always going to want that second one now for your shooter game you really don't need all that, right? You don't need a collider because it's just a stationary shooter. So if you wanted to use this, you could probably go with the first one. It'd be okay. But for an adventure game when we're trolling through a forest on a desert island, I think we're probably going to need a rigid body controller. All right, so I'm going to drag this and drop it. But before I do that, I probably need to center up on my starting point. I'll drag it and drop it right in the middle. Zoom down on it. And we're going to need to move it up. Otherwise, we're going to wind up paratroopering in. Probably going to do that anyway. And I usually just put it in there until it looks like it's disappearing under the ground a little bit. And then come up just a little bit until that capsule is all the way out. And that's a good starting point. This grass is probably going to be gigantic, so we're probably going to have to make this guy taller, but that's okay. All right, we have everything we need to get started. We have an extra camera here. So for now, I'm just going to turn this off. So the thing that says main camera, turn it off because 
the rigid body first person controller has its own camera. Ooh, sorry, I didn't know it was off the screen. Has its own camera right there. So you don't need two cameras on this in the scene at the same time. All right, let's take a take a look. I'll hit play. And I have a first person shooter here basically. So if I hit W, I can walk. And the trees ought to have colliders on them, so I should bounce off of them. Which I think was a problem last year. Tree colliders didn't work. Okay, so you can see what I did with the size on the road, right? <laughs> it was probably tempting to make it really big. We've got some details popping in out of the view. So before we can make this production ready, we would have a lot of work to do on that. Camera scripting and so forth. We'll walk through the grass. Now, if I stop, you can see that the grass is waving in the breeze. Pretty nice. The imaginary breeze, right. And if you ever see a rock doing that, <laughs> shimmering like that, then you probably just picked the wrong thing. It's, it's easy to fix. Is there a way to, to change the input of it without a, to check if you did that to a rock? Is there a way to change it to a detail, detail without having felt replacing it? I think so. Let me think. Let me go back over here and see. Um, yeah, you, yeah, 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 you can. So let's see. Let's go back over to terrain. And let's go to our details. And I can click Edit Detail and Edit. And I think if there's a way to fix it, it would be here. but I don't see anything, so maybe not. No, I'm actually guessing if you screw that up, you have to delete it and re-add it. I would have thought there was a nice little setting here, but I don't see one. Although since I have this up, I will point this out because I know there's a test question on this, um, the billboard setting. So does everyone know what a billboard is? Sure, it's that... Thing, that thing you see that when you're, face you when yeah, you right, exactly. Yeah. It's that thing on the road, right? Yeah. <laughs> thing on the side of the road. The giant signs. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the giant signs on the road are the right idea. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically what a billboard is, you can imagine an X, and if you're looking down from above on that X, then you can take a, a map and put that map on there and fix it so that the billboard is always facing the player and it just rotates. So what we have with trees especially is, is a place where you're going to see this. So trees that are off in the distance are going to have less detail on them. So if I walk up to one of them, it's going to look really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, lots of detail. But if I look way, way, way far off in the distance, there's trees out there too, but they're not being drawn all the way. The, the images that make up the tree are being pasted onto essentially a two-dimensional object. And I don't know if there's a way I can show you that, <laughs> but I think that's what that popping is that we see off in the distance as I get closer. They're coming off of the billboard and into view, and I suspect that we've got a clipping plane issue, aside from being really short. <laughs> I had the idea the other night that I should totally use this to make a game where you're a flea. <laughs> this could be the dog hair, right? You could jump. Yeah. Because that's built in. 
<laughs> Except he'd want to jump a lot higher. <clears throat> all right, so pretty neat, right? This, your first person functionality is all there. Um, there are a few things on here that I'll point out. If I go back to this first person controller, it's got a script on it already. So this controls the camera and all of that neat stuff, but it also has footsteps and bouncing up and down. So you got a head bob. I think it's noticeable. What happened? <laughs> Oh, I'm hitting the wrong key. That's what happened. Yeah. It's a little bit noticeable. As opposed to just sort of fluidly skating over the landscape, which is what we had in Unity 4. <clears throat> so the scripts are a lot better, and there's actually sound in this. Um, I don't think I have it set up so that you can hear it, but that's okay. Footsteps, which I actually find kind of annoying, so you might want to turn those off, but that's up to you. All right, so the other trick I was going to show you is we have this extra camera over here, and it's turned off. And so what we can do is um, we can actually make a map camera out of this if you wanted to, and I know you do. So let me show you how this works. We've got this camera, and we, we don't want to call it main camera. Let's change the name to map camera. And what I'll do is... Oh, Skybox was the thing I was going to show you next, and I forgot about it. We'll do it in a minute. Don't let me forget, Skybox. So what we'll do is we'll take this second camera. Did I turn it back on? I thought I did. Yeah, I did. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, that's better. <laughs> it's like, why can't I see anything? All right, we'll take this, and we'll move it out. Where is it? Oh, it's way over here. Okay, here's what I'll do. I'll go back over to my terrain. I don't really want to drag that over. <laughs> go back over to my terrain. I'll find my starting point. In fact, I'll just do this. I'll go to my rigid body controller, my guy, my player. My dude. And I'll position myself over at a height. That looks okay. And now I'll pick the map camera. And I'll do game object align with view. And that should put it right there. And now I will parent this onto my first person controller. So now I have main camera and map camera. And now with my map camera selected, I'll change my viewport rect to, I don't know, maybe point, I don't know, point three and point seven. We'll see where that puts it here in a minute. That's, oh, I put seven and point seven. This is between zero and one, so don't get that wrong or you won't be able to see anything. Tell you what, I'll put it at point five and point five. Ooh, I lost it. Point three and point three. We can still see it. <clears throat> I can always move it here in a minute. And then my width and height. Um, I'll make it 0.25 and 0.25. And my depth, I'll make that 2. So what that does is it will cause it to be drawn on top of the other camera. So now we've basically got this matte camera that's going to follow us around. And there's one more thing I need to change. Actually, there might be a couple of things I need to change. Let me see, where's the, oh, here it is, clear flags. I'm not going to draw a skybox, so I might as well go with depth only. That should be okay. Let's see if it works. It's probably going to be in a really weird place. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, oh, I see, it's sticking through the ground. Weird. <clears throat> Move it up to solid color and see if that fixes it. And the the size on this thing is going to be 
width and height of the screen. Um, so point one is going to be all the way over. So in the game view, I can actually change this, and I should be able to see it as it changes. So that's a nice way to do it. So if I want this to be a, a nice map view, I can put it down here in the corner. Okay, that's good enough. I'm obsessing again, aren't I? <laughs> All right, the only problem, of course, is the grass is coming in and out of the clipping plane, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we can fix this. How can we fix that? Disable the grass. You can disable the grass. We could also make this higher up, couldn't we? Yeah. So that it's out of range. That's probably the easiest thing. Let me try that. Which way is up? Why? Because I want to know. Oh, sorry, I'm talking to myself again. Okay, so we'll move this up a ways and see if that fixes it. And there we go. So does it follow us? Let's see if it follows us. Yeah, kind of. It's going the wrong way, though, isn't it? So we probably need to rotate our camera. But that's a simple adjustment, right? Minimap made easy. <clears throat> All right, so that's the Skull Island exercise. No coding in that one, just lots of object manipulation. <laughs>